Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorma. All right, we've got Roy Paul, Executive Director of Sensibility, sense-ability.org. Roy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right, my pleasure. My, you know, just accolades, accolades, accolades for helping children understand the critical need for financial literacy, li- literacy uh, throughout the educational system. I mean, great work. Thank you so much. You know, it's something that, even though we focus on teenagers as an organization, we often find that many adults uh, come to us and say, I wish I knew some of these basic things that you're teaching to teenagers. Uh, A lot of the students go home, they talk to their parents, their parents call the organization, how can I sign up for these types of things? So it's, it's something that everyone, no matter who you are, what age you are, what your political affiliation, everyone can agree that whether you don't have a lot of money, aspire to have it, or if you've been fortunate enough to have it, you should know how to manage it. How did you come up with this? Well, I didn't come up with it. I am the executive director of the organization. I've been here with the organization for 11 months in its 14-year history, but it was founded by Alexa DuPont Bell and John Moore. Alexa is a member of the DuPont family, and she and John were students at Harvard Business School. And despite what I just said, the DuPont family, Harvard Business School, they had trouble with their personal finances. And they turned to themselves one day and said, look, if we have the kind of access and privilege that we do, and we don't understand the basics of personal finance, can you imagine younger people, especially those from low economic areas, who don't have any of this knowledge and access? We should do something to give back. And it was really birthed out of a volunteer idea and movement. Uh, so it was essentially volunteer ran for about four or five years before Society General, the French bank, came in and said, we actually want to do some good, some community outreach, and we want to give our volunteers an opportunity within the bank to go out and do some, some service. So they brought us under their corporate social responsibility wing, and that was in 2008. So for about 10 years now, we've been supported by Society General, housed at Society General, and funded by a great degree by Society General. Well, tell me about the outreach. So we have about 100 partners every year, and that ranges from nonprofit organizations like the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, or traditional public schools, um, charter schools, and private schools. And we have eight modules ranging from intro to goal setting, savings, budgeting, credit, your financial future, 401k planning, stocks, investment. And they tell us, the partner, when they want us to come, how often they want us to come. And we have a portfolio of about 500 volunteers on any given year, mostly from the financial services industry, some retirees as well, some educators. And they go out into the field and they teach this material to the youngsters. How young? We typically age about about 14 to 21. Is there any uh, emphasis on being able to bring this into uh, an earlier stage of development? You know, like start? Yes. Okay. Yep. So we, ha- we have uh, some middle schools in our portfolio, but for select partners, uh, if they say to us, uh, and, you know, we really don't like to say no here at Sensibility. So if we have someone says to us, you know, we want to introduce this at an earlier age. We always say yes. We have some, even though we kind of cater to nonprofits and schools, we do have some folks who come to us and say we have mothers who just gave birth who need financial literacy. We say yes. We have some organizations like the Fortune Society who caters to those who are formerly incarcerated on any age stratosphere, and they say, look, we have a lot of young people and old people who need to get their credit back on track. Uh, and how can you help them with that? So we also do credit counseling for some select partners. But it's also something because all of our modules are within PowerPoint presentations. We also give our modules for free, all of our services are free, to people outside of New York State and beyond. So we have partners uh, in Virginia, um, a couple in California, who say we want to use your modules within our curriculum because it's not something that's ingrained in most curriculums throughout the country. Economics is, um, and in some cases, personal finance is an elective, but across the board, it's not something that's actually included in the curriculum. The students aren't tested in it, but some states have said, by the time a student graduates the 12th grade, that school district should at least give them one 
financial personal finance course or a few hours in personal finance. Let me jump in there for, for a second here. Sorry, uh, I can talk forever. I yes, apologize. you can. But let, let me let's let's have a conversation about this for for a second here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, young ch- young children. I mean, under the age of ten, are very adept at using their smartphones to communicate mm-hmm. and gamify everything. I don't understand, and maybe you guys could do this. Is why you're not gamifying uh, micro loans to young children to teach them how to build their credit and how to work that into the system? Because if they can use a smartphone to to use Instagram and tweet and everything else that you see them doing, some things you don't even know what they're doing, they could certainly master this and be able to build credit through these micro loan processes. I mean, if you can do it in Africa, you can do it here. Yeah, I think there is there is credit to that argument. I think from our standpoint, we have really prided ourselves on being um, in a very education model esque way, direct to a student. Uh, so we like the in person, face to face interaction that a volunteer can have with a youngster. Um, I will tell you personally, I think that there are that there is credit and value in the technology piece. Um, because, as you stated, there are young people who are getting their information through the apps, many of which you can download for free, uh, and you don't have to pay anything. But there's a certain level of, um, uh, I would say, uh, for lack of a better word, um, principledness. You have to really be dedicated to, you know, to, to swipe through the app, to go through the lesson, to get the information. With us, the students are really mandated to be there because the principal or the teacher is bringing us into that environment uh, and we've got that 45 minutes with them, you know, the average length of the class for to get this information to them. You know, uh, Roy, we only have a minute left. Real quick, next phase or step for the organization? Growth, absolutely growth on all fronts, specifically outside of New York State. So I hope to launch in Chicago. We're planning that right now. We also are talking about a Jersey City, New Jersey expansion. Uh, so we really want to be an all the hot button urban states and to do that we need um, partners from volunteers from nonprofits, schools from corporations who want volunteer engagement for their employees very holistic approach but we really want to grow and be uh, financial literacy across the country i'm sure you will roy thanks for being a guest on the show thank you so much you're welcome roy paul executive director of sensibility sense-ability.org You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining.